It's great to be back in Bermuda. This is my fourth time, and on every occasion, I've had a chance to dive Mary Celestia. This, this project really is a rescue archaeology project, and we've been really fortunate to sort of get some of the world's best experts to come and assist us. What I've never seen before is that more sand has moved out of that bow, and that there's artifacts that are exposed, and that's exciting. The, the hope, rather than the expectation, is that we'll find bottles of wine. Because you know, there's always a chance we'll go there, and there's, there's nothing there. The boxes are empty, it looks like. The top two. Okay. So at this stage, I didn't see any bottles. We're working inside a bow in an area that's been storm hit. Storms are coming again, and we don't have a lot of time. Instead of taking a year or more to dig this up, we have a week. The Mary Celestia is probably one of the best preserved Civil War blockade runners. When the Civil War broke out, the Northern strategy to win had to depend not only on success on the battlefield, but also the economic strangulation of the South. The Confederates turned to blockade runners. These blockade runners are feeding the South with those commodities that they just can't produce themselves. From the uniforms and boots to the bullets and the guns themselves, all of that was run through the blockade. It was inevitable that Bermuda would be wrapped up as a key player in this war. And Bermuda is the, is the link to make that short run into the South. Bermuda becomes a very vital hub for the Confederacy. What helps all of this, of course, is the fact that the Bermudians are very pro-Southern. So this past January, we came, came out after a winter storm, and um, a good foot of sand had been removed from the inside of the bow. And lying in the bottom of that was a bottle of wine and the, what looked like the corner of a case. Clearly, there's a lot of money to be made just on finding a way to get those few luxury goods through. They're willing to pay a black market price for something that's come through in a blockade runner. Things like fine wines, your perfumes, your dresses, your hats. So that created a real conflict. So much so that ultimately the Confederate Congress would pass a law forbidding blockade runners from carrying luxury goods anymore. When you start looking at the whole story of the Marie Celeste and, and the Crenshaw brothers who own the ship, you start to really get a sense that these guys are really outside the norm. But if something bad happens to them, no one's going to shed a tear. The sinking is a, is a sort of wide open question, if you want. There's a lot of, there's a lot of details, you know, a lot of even personal details, which is really rare. And yet somehow, despite these, we're still left with this great mystery. You hear about these types of finds, the fact that the sea as much as it can destroy, can also preserve. The, the, our, our greatest fantasy would be to find a bottle of wine that's corked, that, the, that whatever liquid is in there is pretty much the liquid that it went down as, rather than having some water coming in and mixing. That would be the, the absolute fantasy to find that.